It's your family tree, a mystery. Are you fascinated by genealogy? Well, hip hip hooray, let's talk DNA with Julie. The truth is in your genes. In cut off genes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Cut Off Genes, the podcast that helps you find your truth using nothing but DNA. I'm Julie Dixon Jackson. I'm a genetic genealogist, henceforth known as a Gen Genie, and I'm a tad stressed. <laughs> so, uh, if you're a regular listener, you know that as you listen to this, I am across the pond. And right now, I have an hour until I leave for the airport. Um, and I feel like I have made a grievous mistake buying cheap, cheap luggage. So, that may be a story in and of itself. <gasps> I'm having a minor panic attack. I've decided not to put makeup on yet because I would just be, keep sweating it off. I'll do it when I get to San Francisco and can relax before my international flight. Anyway, I think my bag is probably too heavy. I bet I'm going to have to pay extra. Um, and the zippers don't seem to be very good on my luggage. And I bought it because it's a funky color, and I like to do that because it's easier to see. Anyway, so guys, uh, this will be the last actual episode until I get back in September. But I wanted you to hear this conversation I had with Valerie Naiman. And I'm just going to read you her biography. Um, she's an author, adoptee, story songwriter, passionate singer, repurposer, goat mama, apiarist, apiarist? I don't know what that is, and I don't have time to look it up. Gardener, environmental activist, and eco-village founder living in Asheville, North Carolina. She has a heart for homeless children and has projects to support her passion. As you'll discover in Mystic Masquerade, she's a secret to her natural family. In her role as an author, her new book, Mystic Masquerade, an adoptee's search for truth, will launch on the blue moon in August. Her personal journey through six decades delves into life's biggest mysteries. Whether you like a good mystery, are searching for your family, or simply curious about your ethnicity, you're sure to be inspired. Uh, guys, if you've ever wanted to hear somebody match my energy and actually surpass it, this is the interview to listen to. <laughs> Val is a trip and she's delightful. So this is the whole conversation I had with her. Please enjoy it. Thank you so much, Valerie Naiman, for doing this. And I'm going to say this now because I don't want to come back at the end and re-record something because I'm panicked. <sighs> the truth is in your genes. Jules out. Guys, I have on the line Valerie Naiman, author and late Discovery adoptee. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> yes, it's kind of like that for that sure. It started out well. <laughs> <laughs> Full disclosure, I've read the first third of the book. Oh, wow, that was great. Yeah. And I actually didn't want to finish it yet because I, I like the essence of surprise and I don't want to know everything about you before I talk yeah. to you. So you have a book that is about to be released when? Um, it will be launched. I'm having a super blue moon launch on August 30th. It's the biggest moon of the year. And I am so excited. This is like the full Monty for me. I've worked on this book for so long. Yeah. So have music. I'm going to sing some of my story songs that also will accompany the book. And um, I've written songs throughout the whole uh, journey okay. that I've taken to find my mother and father. Love that. So I, I actually contacted you. I don't know. Must have been three or four years ago. I don't really? remember how long it was. Yes, I did. I sent you a message because I was Googling for something and the name of my song came up Which and the was? name of my song is Holy Cutoff Jeans. No! And so I, I sent you a message and I told you about it and I said, do you want to hear it? And you said, yes. And then I sent it to you and I never heard from you again. I probably didn't and get it just like I didn't get the first version of your book. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I have too many email addresses to uh, to keep track of, so that's totally on me. Oh, it's it, it, these days it's totally on me. I have nine email addresses, and they oh. all go to one. But sometimes something's tweaking, like the ones from my website don't really yeah. make it where they're supposed. To. You know what it's like. Oh, I do, know. I do indeed. Right. Um, I love that you have a song called "Holy Cut Up Jeans." 
That's yeah. fantastic. And I'm definitely going to listen to it this time. <laughs> I uh, promise. There's a blip of it on on my uh, website, okay. actually. Okay, good. You can hear blips of podcasts and that and read one of the uh, audiobook chapters, this kind of thing. Okay, cool. So that's it, ValerieNaman.com. So, all right, tell me what, uh, I, don't, I don't want you to basically recite the whole book, obviously, but I'd love to hear and I'd love for the listeners to hear a little bit about how you got to where you are and uh, what your process was. Yeah. And and I love sharing my story with other adoptees and it's other adoptees, that tribe that's really helped me come together. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I didn't cry about it until I was 40 years old. Yeah. That was the first time I thought never knew my mommy. <laughs> yeah. And you know, there, there's so much trauma when you're taken from your mother at birth and there's, you know, um, uh, I think a majority of adoptees have a feeling that they're not worthy. Absolutely. And that, that's so sad. The high suicide rates, all of this. And, you know, the narrative that goes out there yeah. and that the adoptees aren't considered, it just, just raises my hair up. Yeah, so- it's really gotten to me a lot it, since I came bursting through the doors through the fog exit um (laughs) that the the narrative is what really gets my goat is that I just I'm constantly having to explain to people and constantly having to hear well I know an adoptee and he's fine or blah 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 what people don't understand is that for most of us the trauma doesn't manifest until we're elderly (laughs) until we are over 40 I didn't you know my first inkling that I had trauma was when I had my daughter and then you know it manifested much later in a much more severe way um, that the listeners know about but you know most adoptees are not people that were sad children right so we go through our lives, like I went through my whole life, and I just became a theatrical actress. I didn't know who I was. Mm-hmm. So I went from one character to another to another. You know, I was, my adopted mother was like a stage mother, so I was her little Shirley Temple. Mm-hmm. They'd take me out and set me on a table, and I'd tap dance before we had dinner on Miami Beach at a Jewish restaurant, because I was my father's side was Jewish. My mother's side was, you know, holistic. So it was a, it was a, I had a great upbringing, but they never, ever fessed up about me being adopted, even when I asked. And, and that's crazy so to me. that is crazy. No, and I didn't know until they passed away. And then when they passed away, I found adoption papers and my bill of sale. Isn't uh, that cute? Do you remember how much it was? <laughs> um, no, it, I, I wasn't like a million dollar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ashamed to say how cheap I went for. Yeah, I was, uh, I, I, in my adoption papers, um, it didn't say how much my parents were paying. I know they had to donate to the church, the Methodist church. Uh-huh. Uh, and so that's probably where the, the money went. But, but it did say how much money my father made a year, which seemed freakishly low, which nowadays I would be surprised if they would have been allowed to adopt. Because, Uh you know, it was 1965, so, you know. Right. But I was 1950, but I'm not sure about that. And I might be anywhere from 1950 to 1954 because I never have had um, a verification of where I was born and when I was born. So you still don't have your original birth certificate? Oh, yeah, but the original, when I finally got my original birth certificate, <laughs> oh, God, it was too funny. When I got my first birth certificate, I had to kind of bribe and play schemes on my adopted parents is because I got accepted to do a directed individual study program in um, London. Right. And I had to have a passport. And to get a passport, you got to have a birth certificate. So they didn't produce anything for me. And I I thought, shit, I found out if I had a copy of their birth certificates and all my papers being accepted in the UK and some other things that I could go to the courthouse and get a copy of my Mm -hmm. birth certificate. So I told my parents, I said, Oh, I'm, I'm doing, hi, I'm doing a a family tree on our family. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they were cooperative. They're like, 
oh yeah, there's our birth certificate. So I got those, went down to the Miami-Dade courthouse and was able to get a birth certificate. Wait, and that- so you, but the what did the birth certificate say that you got? Oh, the birth certificate I got was all my adopt- my adopted parents right. were the informants and the hospital code didn't match up to the hospital. And then there, my mother's name was misspelled. So even that one, um, so that was, was the birth, that was an existing birth certificate. They didn't like type it up while you were there. No, no, they, okay. they pulled it from somewhere. Okay. And then much, much later, if we're talking about the birth certificate thing, I just had one weird thing after another happen. And when I finally tracked down, oh, so when I, when my adopted parents passed, I found my adoption papers, mm-hmm. right? And it said I was called Infant Hanson. Uh-huh. And I thought, oh God, I got a name. I can find my mother. And I didn't ever look for my father. It was like the mother. Well, you don't think mother. about that at first, right? Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like, not a part of the I thought, equation. I mean, I was guarded against men. I thought guys were schmucks and that he'd probably, you know, got her pregnant and split and mm-hmm. that kind of thing, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, I didn't have a never was able to bond and be in relationships, which is something I didn't know till way later where that came from. Same, same here. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very so, difficult. Yeah. Oh God. So beyond all odds, when I finally tracked my mother down, I, um, well, w- one of the spoilers is she agreed to meet me if I'd be a secret to the family, but she threw a party. And I posed as a photographer. <gasps> what? And I got, yes. So oh. I got to meet the family. This is after pleading with her, after meeting her. She let me come to her house. I go down there all the time. So you she still was, had to act like yes. somebody else when you I, first I still, met your mother. Still wearing a mask. Oh, my God. I mean, meeting her was just amazing. She was 94 at the time. Mm-hmm. When We went out dancing. She still drove wild and independent, just like me. And I'm like, she, she walked like me. She talked like me. She laughed like me. I'd never seen anything. Yes. Oh my God. That's her. Yeah. And I look at my pictures when my pictures are big of my mouth is usually like, (laughs) oh my God. I love her. I love that picture. (laughs) Oh my God. So from there. After, you know, a year or so, and, oh, she finally fessed up and told me my birth father's name. Mm-hmm. Now, meanwhile, in the process of getting to this point, I'd taken, I'd searched all over before internet arrived. Mm-hmm. And I got three DNA tests because first one didn't do anything. Second didn't do anything. Third one didn't do anything. And I just had to wait. I built trees and then tore them apart. And my whole house, this room went into the kitchen, into my living room and dining room, which was taped together trees of all these different people trying to relate them, finding one person who might match with another. Yeah. It was crazy. My friend Tara came over and she's like, uh, I'm taking you to a movie. And so <laughs> we ran out and we went to see the lion. And it gets to the part where he's got things taped up on the wall and his maps and she's like elbowing me. And she goes, that's you. <laughs> Wait a minute. The lion, you mean lion? The one, the, yes. the kid from, from uh... India. Yeah. Oh, I love that movie. Me too. And yeah. I lived in India for 11 years. So it was really powerful to watch that. I bet. And so anyway, I, I finally did track my mother down. Okay. And, and, and was her I name Hanson? No, no, it no. wasn't. It wasn't Hanson. At How all. did you track her down? I, I, I guess we need I, to wait for the book. Three DNA <laughs> test and lots oh, of DNA. work. I hired psychics. I, I went to Casadega. I had numerous readings. I hired detectives. I worked with DNA detectives. I worked with um, Lana and Mary, who were on DNA detectives, mm-hmm. and then they got somebody, another detective, and still couldn't find. And it's like, oh God. That's why I call Beyond All Odds. Yeah. I used to teach that class at the American Adoption Congress um, two years ago. And then, of course, COVID hit and everything was canceled. But I can do it again. Yeah. I mean, if I could do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> so I, find, I, I found my mother and I threw a big first birthday party. So, oh, God, I got a birthday party. 
<laughs> and, uh, and I told her everything I was going to do. My band would play and I'd do this and this and this. And everybody come dressed as their own kid. And it was so much fun. Best party I ever threw. Although I'm throwing a launch party coming up. Yeah, on a that's coming. That that <laughs> I got the, the invite for that. That is the day I am <laughs> arriving back from the UK. So uh, I'm not oh, going to make oh, it unless oh. I unless I take a little side trip to North Carolina. But I think I'm going to be exhausted <laughs> at that point. Probably. Yeah, but probably. We've got a cacao lounge and musicians and we got sitar and piano we got a bunch of stuff going on and surprises and gifts you know i'm so excited to finally have my book all i have right now is is proofs that don't look great and yep. i'm supposed to have 125 of them delivered friday and they haven't got here so. oh my gosh because i'm going to nashville um to the operation fog lift too oh right 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 oh yeah rebecca uh, autumn sansom is yeah she, me to that. yeah she put my book up and everything and you know, awesome so I may even sing there. We'll see. Oh, what cool. Happened. My yeah, question I, for you. So was your father who your mother said it was? No. Um, well, kind of. What does that mean? <laughs> so I got my mother. Let me finish the birthday. Right. Oh, okay. Go ahead. So I finally, when I had the birthday party, my mother, she wouldn't come because she was a secret, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, she asked what I wanted for my birthday. And I said, I want my birth certificate, please. So I had all the papers with me. I had her sign it all. We went down to the little UPS store close by and um, she signed, notarized, and I sent it off. Okay. A couple of weeks later, I get a message back from uh, Florida Vital Statistics and said, you sent in all the right papers, but that's not your mother's name on your birth certificate. I was so bummed out. You know, we adopt these. We got to spend money doing all of this. Oh, yes. DNA it's very adoptee. expensive being being an adoptee, especially a non-compliant one. Oh, yeah. it's just crazy. Mm -hmm. So she took me out to the ocean. She lived on the ocean in Florida. <laughs> she took me out for a nice breakfast brunch, you know, the next day. Uh, and uh, I'm like, uh, is, is my father's name Hanson? And she goes, oh, he was so handsome. You wouldn't believe how handsome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny, mom. But I want to know about his name, you yeah. know. No, she gave a, a totally different name. And so anyway, I just had this hunch. And I said, listen, she loves to gamble. She, okay. she went to Vegas every year to gamble. And uh, I said, I'll bet you 100 bucks that you put a fake name on my birth certificate and you use the name Hanson. She goes, okay, I'll bet you. I know I didn't do that. Bingo. I got my birth certificate. So she forgot that uh, she changed her name or she, that's she lied. She just she lied. lied. But did she, okay. It was it a lie that she kept for so long that she believed it to be true or was she still lying to you? Um, she was a great liar. I mean, I, I, she was, um, I, I caught her in numerous lies mm. while I knew her. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's like my brother would call and she'd answer the phone. Usually I'd just go outside because mm -hmm. he called every day. And, and uh, this was after the party where I posed as a photographer. <laughs> and he, and I hear her say, oh, no, she's gone. Don't worry about her. This kind of thing, you know. So, yeah, I caught her lying numerous times. Yeah, but um, I got my birth certificate. Okay, and, uh, even it was a lie. You know, almost everything on it was a lie. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm tracking my father. Right. Yeah. I'm going to skip straight to finding him. Okay. Because it was not the name she said. All right. It took me forever, and no names matched up with that, mm -hmm. and none of the matches, like third cousins, is as close as I was getting. Yeah. Well, I, I wasn't able to link them up. So this goes on for like two years and more. And all of a sudden, bingo, I get a second. I get a a first. Oh, right? long story short was my half sister. Okay. And I had to go through all kinds of interrogation before the big shots would let me talk to her. And uh, anyway, um, as soon as she said, yes, I flew to Vegas. That, it was a really difficult thing to do. But I got to know my brother who was born three months after me. Oh, 
Oh, I was a big surprise. Sure. A, sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, so was your father still living? No, but okay. my fa- my brother took me to his gravesite and showed me his birth certificate and his birth certificate. I mean, it's handwritten, mm-hmm. black, and white stuff. And it has a box where it says legitimate. Can you believe that? Yes, I have copies of that. I can't believe says, that. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. So I'm an illegitimate child of an illegitimate child. And that makes me a double negative. So I'm a positive and I know it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I sure. I got <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then I found out and my, my brother pulled out all these pictures. My mother said she had no idea who his family was, no idea where he was mm-hmm. and all this stuff. My brother pulls out all these pictures. They knew exactly who my mother was. She was a great, good friend of the family for for years. Mm. And they had all these pictures of my my mother with my father years after I was born. Years after I was born. And I found one picture, like the white white bird is my medicine. I mean, it's the whole living language for me. When I see a white feather, I know I'm going in the right direction type of thing. Oh, yeah. I have that way with black crows. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Yeah. That's my black. Your white feather is yeah. my black crow. <laughs> got you. Got you. Yeah. So he brings out this picture I have it framed here on the wall of my mother and my father holding a bamboo stick with a white bird sitting in the middle. Oh, my gosh. I just freaked out. I saw that. I go, oh, and then and then after my mother passed away Christmas. Mm hmm. And before she passed away, she said, there's no secrets anymore. And, um, but the other people, the one person I had made the connection, don't, don't do that. Don't say anything. She's in not in the right mind. And that's another whole story of how yeah, all man. that came. Wow. So, but I ended up calling my brother. My, my sister would not acknowledge me, talk to me or anything. This was on your father's side? No, this is my mother's side. Her so her other daughter would not acknowledge you, right? Isn't that crazy? But her son did. Okay, and we talk every week, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he was like, so I drove down to see him in Florida, and then we went out to some tiki bar and we're talking, and uh, I showed him pictures of her with my father, and he says. No wonder she went to Vegas every year. Ah, uh, all right, because he lived in Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> and she's like, she's like, oh, I said, did she go alone? He goes, yeah, always. Thought, oh, well, isn't that convenient? Mm, wasn't when she got there. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. So when I went to Vegas, I didn't tell my mother all of this until I got back and I brought photos. I brought photos of his grave, his tombstone that's engraved with, I did it my way. Right. And I took that, got a Frank Sinatra song, got a CD player. uh, And then I, I made a slideshow of all the pictures and I went to see her and I sat her down. I said, you got to see this. Oh my gosh. She was just tears running down her face and at first, I just played the music through once, and she like looking at the tape recorder, like, "What is that?" You know. And then, and then I played the the turned her around, showed her the slideshow, you know, little tears, and then she's like touching the computer screen, and it's like, "Oh my god!" But she wow. never admitted it. Wow. Wow. Never, never admitted it. It's so, there must have been so much trauma for them for the, to be so closed off about something that is just a fact. And it would be so helpful for us to have that validation, right? We have the right to know. Yes. I have one, one chapter that I, my audio book is on, the, on my website and it's called Rights of a Mattress. Wait, is the, is the, um, when's the audio book going to be out? It's done except for the last two chapters. So okay. I'm waiting to get my book back and, you know, read the whole thing through. Okay. And the audio book is much longer because I was like up to a hundred and something thousand words and I get, everybody says, don't go over 80. So I started cutting and cutting, you know, and I took I hate to say kill your babies, but I, I just pulled so much. I took full chapters out. Oh, wow. 
Yeah. Okay. And then oh, I put some chapters and put them all together mm-hmm. and I think it works fine. It works well. And then um, I've got more books coming out in the hopper too. So. Okay. So that's, that was my question for you because I'm in the process of, of course, I think we all write <laughs> books. <laughs> um, oh what was your process? What, uh, tell me how you decided how you settled where you settled and, and why you started where you started. Are you talking about the book? Mm-hmm. Are you talking about? Oh, well, I, when I was, you know, seven, I, I learned how to type 100 words a minute. Okay. My father taught me. He had a publishing company. He wanted me to be a writer. He did magazines and stories and read stuff of his and in Congress and this kind of shit. So I was a little writer. Okay. And I have, I don't have the little old pink diaries that have the lock anymore. I do. <laughs> I threw some of those away, but I have in this room, I have a basket, you know, twice as wide as my arms of journals I've written throughout okay. the years. Okay. So did you and reference I, them? Did you, and oh, yes, right. Did it's you write like, did I do ayahuasca and Amazon before I did? <laughs> when was that? What year was that? It, it, this kind of thing, you know, it's yeah. like, I have to go back and it, it was amazing after 11 years in India, I come back and I, I, um, I started drawing a map of all the places I'd been and then it just there was a psychic who had actually foretold all of that really and I remember but I had audio I have audio recordings of it Mm -hmm. and so I yeah those that had I not had all my journals and stuff there's no way I could do this yeah plus every conversation I had with my mother I recorded that's so great I asked her the first time I Good said, I want to, you. you're saying, so I'm going to turn this on and record it. Oh, you can do anything you want. So I've got word for word. Oh, that's you know? great. That's great. I didn't put all of it in there, but when I needed to pull out and, and really say exactly what the words were, I had them. Okay. So that was my process. You know, I mean, getting your stuff together and you've got piles of papers and journals and yeah. audio recordings it's like it's a daunting task mm-hmm. it's really daunting and when I first was like okay I'm down to put it together now and it was going into winter and uh, all of a sudden I tripped with an arm load of firewood and broke my wrist in half oh no and I tried you know uh, speech to text doesn't work yeah. very well yeah no, it does not <laughs> Yeah, it's been a wonderful journey uh, doing this. I am so glad to do this book because almost everything I tried to read later after I realized I I was a little screwed up from Mm -hmm. being adopted. Mm -hmm. Everything I read um, was pretty negative. Mm -hmm. And all the trauma, all the trauma, all the trauma. And I have a core belief. I, I never went into the I'm not loved not cared for. I never went there. Mm-hmm. I went in the complete opposite direction. I went to, I got this. I don't need anybody's help. Mm-hmm. I can do it all by myself. Mm-hmm. I, I want to talk a little bit about what we have in common. I don't know if you know this about me, but you were an actress. I'm a you? musical theater entertainer. Yes. Me too. I, I, know. I know. I know. That's you what I, when I was listening. Adoptee. Yeah. When I was Let's reading. Let's do an adoptee it. show together. I want to. I'm going. Well, I do too. Cut Off Jeans is by, so uh, that is the name of my one woman show as well as my book. So I don't right. know how we're going to work that out. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's called Holy Cut Off Jeans. Okay. That's the difference right there. Do you spell it the yeah. same way I do? Yep. Okay. Valerie Naiman, thank you so much for talking to me today. Tell us again the name of the book and when it will be released and how people can find all your stuff. The name of my book is Mystic Masquerade, An Adoptee's Search for Truth. And you can find me at valauthor.com okay. gotcha. or valerienaman.com okay. or Instagram, valauthor. And also I have a couple of Facebook sites up when my Yay. private, my author, please come see me. Go to my website. There's freebie.